city and, and urban ecology, uh, a project that we spent the last uh, nine years uh, uh, making. This is, uh, this is Noma. This is my houseboat. Uh, and and this, is, uh, this is basically uh, the cleanest waste to energy power plant in the world. Uh, Denmark has become a little bit of a, of a pioneer in the sense that only 4% of our waste goes into a landfill. 42% is recycled and 54% uh, is transformed into district heating and electricity. As a power source, six pounds of garbage from your kitchen uh, turns into four hours of electricity and five hours of domestic heating. It's replacing the power plant in this photo right in the middle of the of Copenhagen, this is the opera, this is the Royal Theater, uh, right next to the marina. And, and it was clear when we, when we did the competition nine years ago that what was mesmerizing about this was this kind of marvel of modern engineering that it was gonna be the cleanest waste to energy power plant in the world. No toxins coming out of the chimney. So we thought maybe a mountain of trash could become an actual mountain. Uh, our nearest ski slope in Copenhagen is six hours away uh, in Isabau in Sweden. We could put two-thirds of Isabau's main slope on the roof of the power plant. Uh, and so we did. Uh, this is what it looked like the, this spring um, before, uh, before opening. As you can see, there's still a little bit of, of vegetation uh, missing. Uh, this is what it looked like uh, uh, in the winter. Um, so, uh, of course, the, the kind of cliff face uh, of the mountain is made out of these gigantic uh, folded uh, raw aluminum uh, bricks that are actually planters this spring. They're going to be uh, uh, full of, uh, uh, of green. Um, raw aluminum tilted so they actually reflect the surroundings so that the building changes color uh, over, the, over the course of the day. Inside, the mountain, you have the entire administration uh, overlooking the city, and then of course they, they look the city at, at the one side, and then they overview this marvel of, of modern engineering. It's also rather unusual because the entire power plant is actually daylit. 50% uh, of the facade is, is transparent, and so you have the administration inside, uh, and of course you, you see the underside of the, of the mountain that is above, the elevator ride, up to the top of the ski hill is looking into this uh, uh, amazing space. Um, this spring, it's going to open the tallest climbing wall in the world, uh, 300 feet. Uh, the, I have no idea who's going to be climbing uh, this thing. Um, and of course, this kind of x-ray uh, at night. And of course, like the fifth facade, in this case, the roof is maybe the most exciting facade. Um, it has skiing, and, and the skiing is for free. It's a public park. If you want to use the lift system, you have to buy a lift pass. Uh, it's sort of designed to be able to sort of help spread um, vegetation to the surrounding uh, sort of post-industrial area. <clears throat> you have hiking paths, <clears throat> different kind of activity zones. You have uh, a kind of vegetation that changes uh, uh, over the course of the, uh, of the season. Uh, there's more than 400 different uh, 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 trees. Uh, and, and in general, it's, this, it's, it's almost like, like Noma, that it's purely indigenous species. If Denmark had mountains, this is probably what, what, what they would look like. Um, also, the entire roof park uh, has been made for a budget of um, around um, 13 million dollars, uh, which is absurdly uh, inexpensive. So, so everything has really been done with the, with the purpose of the least amount of, uh, of maintenance uh, uh, and, and the least sort of a, uh, acquisition cost. Um, maybe when I saw this photo, it dawned on me how insane it was that we were actually making a building with a ski lift uh, on the roof. Um, and, and maybe the most sort of important material, because uh, Denmark or Copenhagen doesn't have enough snow to be a, a serious a ski destination. So we searched around and we found uh, an Italian company uh, that makes this kind of uh, mat that has the same uh, friction as a groomed slope. Uh, the only problem was that it was quite ugly. Um, also because 
because of the thermal expansion and contraction, it had to be split up in these, like, let's call it seven by seven foot squares. So we actually sat down together with the, the company, and in a course of a few months, we managed to develop an entire new product for them. And it's very simple. You have the old product on the left and, uh, and our proposition on, on the right. Simply by joining uh, every two circles in two different directions, uh, the sort of the basic grid goes from squares to rectangles with six knots, which means that when they expand, they can become hexagons, and when they contract, they can become these kind of bow ties, which means that you can actually have one single continuous surface. So like this kind of very simple geometric invention uh, that was then turned into the production, and now it's the standard product of the company, meant that we could actually have a continuous uh, surface on the whole, uh, uh, on the whole roof for the, for the first time. Uh, we color coded it so that uh, the brighter the slope is, uh, the less likely you are to crash into the perimeter. Um, and, and eventually the grass grows through uh, because the grass is a major part of the structure that holds the, the mat to the roof. So uh, eventually it's going to be like skiing on, uh, on, a, on an alpine meadow. So here you see some of the first tests uh, uh, that we did. Um, so uh, you can kind of hear and see that it has, it has the feeling of a groomed slope, which also makes it kind of perfect for freestyle skiers because you can actually uh, do all of the, the, the grinds and the jumps and the tricks uh, as, as you could on a, uh, on a normal slope. <clears throat> so I think what, what's amazing about this, this idea is that um, um, I think it kind of shows this kind of almost like world-changing power of, uh, of architecture that the, my, my son is, is one year old now, so, so he's never going to remember that there was a time when you couldn't ski on the power plant in Copenhagen. Uh, so, so for him and his entire generation, that's going to be their normal. And that's going to be the, the, the starting point from where they start having crazy ideas uh, about their future. Uh, so that, that can almost make you angst about thinking about the, uh, what kind of future they're, they're going to come, come up with. Um, so of course, like some, some kind of, I think also kind of a, a landmark for, for this kind of idea of, of hedonistic sustainability that a sustainable city can also be uh, not just better for the environment, but, but better for the people living there.